Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's Digital Dealer webinar. Today's webinar is sponsored by Reputation and is titled, Apple Maps Makes a Run at Google Maps, How Dealers Should Respond. Our presenter today is Ali Fawaz, Managing Director of Head and Head of Automotive Strategy at Reputation. This webinar will run for about one hour, including a question and answer session. So be sure to use the Q&A panel to enter your questions for our panelists throughout the event. And now, please welcome our presenter, Ollie. Hey, everyone. Thank you guys for having me. Um, looking forward to, uh, to walking you guys through this great presentation here. Let me uh, share my screen. Just a moment. All right. Um, so as, uh, as was mentioned, I'm uh, with reputation.com. I am the uh, manager, managing director and head of our automotive strategy. Um, I come from an automotive background uh, where I worked on uh, the Ford.com and Lincoln.com brand websites uh, for a while while I was at GTB. Um, made a transition over to Ford Direct where I was uh, heading up our the uh, uh, online reputation management uh, program uh, for about six years. And I've been with Reputation now for about three years, um, helping dealers really uh, achieve and look their best online. And so I, I think the topic that we're going to go through today here about Apple Maps uh, and, and what they're doing today in the space to make a run at Google when it comes to the maps and, and how important this actually plays into uh, what you're doing at your dealerships today. So this is a really important topic and I'm excited to be uh, sharing it with you guys. The agenda looks like this. Uh, we're going to go through four points, uh, why and how dealerships are affected by the Apple Maps evolution, uh, the importance of ratings, reviews on map applications, how uh, dealerships should respond to Apple's new customer ratings capabilities, and then finally, how Maps applications fit into a broader online reputation management strategy at the dealership. Um, before we, we launch, I did want to uh, let you guys know we've got uh, uh, a few uh, poll questions for you. And we're gonna start out with your first poll question right now. So as you guys can see, the question is, what Maps application do you use most often? Is it Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, or MapQuest? I'll let you guys lock in your answers. And looks like our results are coming in and uh, not too surprised by these re results, but uh, Google Maps comes in first place with 62% uh, of the votes. Apple Maps comes in second place with 27% of, of the votes and then comes Waze with 11%. And uh, unfortunately, MapQuest gets zero votes, uh, but this is kind of typical. So um, it, it's good to see kind of where, where this audience is at. So, um, you know, Apple uh, Maps turned eight back in September, um, and when it launched, it was originally, it was so bad at the basics of mapping, like as in getting you from point A to point B, um, that it actually became an iconic example of an Apple failure, which we know Apple doesn't fail that often, so uh, to, this really got elevated. Um, yet in recent years, uh, it, Apple has moved closer to becoming and being what it always was intended to have been, been which was a, a Google Maps killer. Now, um, some of those snafus that they had or epic fails, uh, I wanna share those with you guys just because they're, they're, they're a little funny and you may actually remember them when they first occurred. Um, the first one was uh, when Apple Maps, uh, they provided an incorrect address for Washington DC's Dulles Airport. And the directions to that could actually have uh, gotten the driver arrested and possibly even run over by a 747 because their, somehow their map pack was telling people to drive and essentially onto the runway. Um, probably not a smart idea. Um, the uh, next one down is the Brooklyn Bridge plunge. So Apple actually depicts a sharp plunge in the road that you see in the picture here to the left. 
Um, and if drivers used that image, they'd actually be preparing themselves for a sudden death and uh, be pleasantly surprised when it actually didn't happen because truly the bridge was still there. Um, finally, the last one is the Florida hospital. So Apple Maps labeled a Jacksonville, Florida public supermarket as the Riverside Hospital. So you can imagine what kind of hot water that would land to somebody like Apple. Um, it's no wonder that these kind of stories ran rampant and, and became viral online. Uh, and people still talk about them today. Now, in, in 2012, uh, Google wanted more control over Apple Maps, right? You know, th you know th this is what led us to where we are today, uh, is, is this history that started back in 2012. Um, then uh, after Google really uh, uh, wanted more control of, uh, of Apple Maps and Apple basically said, no, we weren't gonna let you guys have it, um, the tables kind of turned. And, and then um, it, it, when it switched, Apple wanted Google's marquee maps features that they had on the Android devices. So uh, Android devices had all these additional features on, on the Google Maps that weren't being deployed on Apple. Um, and when Google turned around and refused Apple and said, no, we're not gonna do that. We wanna keep these for Android devices. That was the point when Apple decided to make its own service. Uh, the original version of Apple Maps actually depended mostly on data from partners to power their maps ratings, the reviews, the photos. And over the years, Apple has actually worked to bring more of that kind of mapping experience directly under its own control. Um, though over the, uh, though the, the overall uh, project started earlier, the first glimpse that most uh, folks had at, of the Apple renewed efforts to build the, the, the best map product that they could was when they started seeing the, the vans appearing on the roads, I'd say around 2015. And Apple Maps uh, signs were on the side of these vans. And they were capped with these sensors and cameras. And, and these vans started popping up in various cities, which at the time sparked all kinds of rampant discussion and speculation over you know, what, what's going on, what, what's Apple doing. Um, now, the, the new Apple Maps will be the first time the data that's collected by these vans is actually used to construct and inform its, its maps. Um, and this, if you will, it, it's like their coming out party, essentially. Um, now, as of the latest iOS 14 beta, um, it had appeared that Apple was looking to remove dependencies that they had on partners like TripAdvisor. Foursquare and Yelp as sources of reviews and, and user photos uh, of things like restaurants, bars, shops, parks, and of course, automotive dealers, among other points of interest. Now, uh, currently, if you actually tap on a place marker, you'll see a photo grid and reviews that are adorned with the logo of these third party uh, integrations like Foursquare, like Yelp, like TripAdvisor. And in auto, what we see is Yelp as the third party integration when somebody's looking at reviews uh, or looking for uh, information about that to business. Um, now, if a user taps on the reviews to read more, Maps will actually go directly uh, and they, they'll direct that user to the app store to download that third party app. So if they didn't have Yelp, it's gonna tell you, go here, download the app. Um, if you already had it, then it'll open up that app. Uh, now, if the user wanted to submit their own photos or reviews, they would also have to do that through the third party app. Um, so ultimately, this is a, a pretty suboptimal experience uh, if you're the consumer. And if you're Apple, you probably recognize that it's not ideal to have to make somebody jump through those kind of hoops. So there are three ways that your iPhone taps into Yelp when performing an auto dealer search. And you guys should be aware of this. The first one is through voice search. That's simply when you pick up your phone and you say, hey Siri, and then you give it uh, some instructions. Uh, perhaps you're looking for a you know, dealer near me. And when you do that, um, it's gonna give you a result uh, that, that pulls from Yelp. The next one is when you do an Apple search bar. So essentially on your phone, when you pull down the screen, you can do a search bar through the app, through your Apple uh, device, and you can type in, you know, dealer near me, Hyundai dealer near me, Ford dealer near me, so on. 
Um, and then as you can see on the screen here, you'll get the results and it'll show them in, in, in a rank order. Uh, oftentimes it's, uh, it, it's uh, based on quantity and quality of reviews, things like that, and of course, proximity. Um, and you'll see here, it even identifies, here's the average star rating and it, it's telling you on Yelp, on Yelp, on Yelp. So it's letting you know that it's, it's pulling this information and this is what it says about your business on Yelp. Finally, uh, the third way is on Apple Maps. So if you open up Apple Maps and you start putting, you know, find a Ford dealer near me or service near me or whatnot, um, you're going to end up with results that look something like this. And again, it's pulling the star ratings and the number of reviews, pulling them directly from Yelp in these instances as well. So what we're actually seeing happen now is that, you know, Apple is working hard to become the new front door. Um, you know, in the past, you may have heard me say that Google is your new front door. Um, Apple is working really hard to be that as well. And in fact, I, I would argue in many instances, they are just because of the sheer number of people who walk around with a, a smartphone that's an Apple device, right? And, and so it's not only Google, but it's not only Apple, but it's also Google. Um, but these two together, Google and Apple, um, jointly are what drive a lot of business to your stores, right? So let's discuss why this is important to, to focus on. It's largely due to the amount of control that both of these players have, Google and Apple, uh, when it comes to your smartphone and the experience that consumers have in this journey. Uh, more search happens on a mobile device than any other platform today. So, and I think you guys have been hit over the head with this many times already, you know that people are mobile, people are, uh, are always on the go. So therefore that's why they're, they're, they're using their devices to get there. Um, and as you saw, it, it's happening on search, um, voice search and maps. And there is a one-stop shop for customers to see your information, photos, QA, frequently asked questions, videos and more. Uh, but also your star ratings and your review, reviews come up. So they're also collecting feedback. Not only is it telling consumers where to go and, and, and giving them information, but it's also taking and collecting information from your consumers. In fact, these knowledge panels are so useful today that our clients who, who we work with are getting up to 10 times the traffic that their website gets. So think about that. We know that you know, websites are not going away. You're always gonna need your website for your dealership. However, the fact that these knowledge panels now garner so much traffic, so much more traffic than your website, means that you have to start focusing on what's being said on these, uh, on these we'll call them, a, you know, a microsite, right? Because essentially it has so much of your dealership's information there. Um, I can tell you that, you know, 90% uh, uh, said that positive online reviews are influenced uh, by uh, 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 reviews, are, are influencing buyer's decisions, right? Well, 86% said that buying decisions were influenced by negative online reviews. Um, you know, looking at things like star ratings, reviews, the quantity of, uh, of, of uh, the, the quantity of reviews and the quality of engagement with those reviews. These are all becoming factors in um, why somebody chooses to do business with your dealership. So when we looked and uh, uh, and, and took a peek to see like what are the most popular uh, uh, mapping sites, and you can see here that Google is number one, right, by far, um, and Apple Maps is in the third spot, just behind Waze, and in, in fact, I think they kind of go neck and neck constantly, sometimes switching back and forth, um, and as you guys saw in, in the poll that we just did, you guys had Apple Maps in the number two spot, so not too surprised, and then uh, and then Waze was in the third spot in, in the folks that we just pulled on this call. Um, but you can see that, you know, once you drop off after Apple Maps, uh, it starts going downhill uh, pretty quickly with Yahoo Maps way down below. So um, what we found was that there was some leaked information. Uh, Apple's iOS 14 at the time, it was speculated that they were going to be rolling out uh, when they rolled it out in 2020 with um, some some new uh, new features from Google Maps, but it doesn't look like they've all rolled out yet. But it was originally expected to change how Apple publishes ratings, reviews, and user-generated photos on Apple Maps. 
Um, Apple already publishes customer ratings and reviews, as we know, as we talked about, uh, of their business and user-generated photos by pulling in the content from those sites that we talked about, like Foursquare, TripAdvisor, and Yelp. Um, but this new process uh, would be a lot less clumsy for the user because instead of having to open up through a third-party app, um, what would happen is it would open within its own platform and allow you to capture, uh, uh, allow Apple to capture your information right there seamlessly without having to take you off to a different uh, platform or a different site. Um, no need to download anything else, right? So these leaked images reveal that the users will hopefully soon be able to take advantage of these, uh, these new Apple features. Um, uh, and, and so that's something that we we're hoping to see by now. Um, so stay tuned, I guess it, it's something that, you know, Apple's never, uh, never gonna tell us right in advance and say, hey, here's when we're dropping this new change. A lot of times when it comes to Google, Apple and Facebook, they just make changes and tell you, surprise, here's what's happening now. Now, um, what can an Apple Maps presence do for your dealership? I think you need to, you know, factor this in and think about it because um, this knowledge panel that you're looking at here, it does act in two different ways. Uh, on, on one hand, it creates visibility for your store. Um, so it's like a beacon. Um, and it also is capturing uh, information on the other side, right? So not only is it a beacon, but it's also a listening post where it's capturing information from your customers. So on one side, it's telling everybody, here's where I am, come, come, come do business with us, find us. On the other side, it's saying, great, once you've had an experience with us, please share your experience here. We wanna learn what you thought about our dealership and uh, we wanna share that with the world. Um, so it, it really has dual purposes in that case. And if you really look at what the journey ends up looking like, the digital journey uh, for a consumer who's on a mobile device today, it looks something like this. And if you think about the flow, I'm sure that you'll find yourself doing something very similar oftentimes, where it starts with perhaps a near me search, which we know Google has told us, these near me searches have become one of the most popular way to search for something, right? Dealership near me, uh, service near me, oil change near me. Um, and then once you put that in the search, then what happens, Apple will, will take that voice search that you do and it'll automatically default to Apple Maps. Um, and when it defaults to Apple Maps, it's as we mentioned earlier, it's still pulling from Yelp for now until, until they switch over to their own content. Um, and it's gonna pull in the Yelp reviews. Um, and it's gonna pull in a map and it's gonna show you like these are the locations that are near you. Now, if somebody clicks on that to get more information, you can click and then you'll open up this panel that we've been talking about, the knowledge panel, where if I'm a consumer, I could learn more about your business, see the photos, click to call. So this is all happening on Apple. It's not happening on Google, but it's a very, very similar journey that Google would actually have. And so it's a presentation I've done for uh, about Google that's very similar in, in that regard. So they are really going head to head against one another. Um, but from here, if I'm a customer, I can find out what your hours of operation are, what your address is. I can find more information about the reviews. I can see if you're responding back to those reviews. And I can, in fact, of course, do some really low funnel key actions, right? That's click to call, click for driving directions. Right? And those are really low funnel. At that point, somebody's calling you or, 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 or coming directly to your dealership. Um, this panel is extremely important. Getting somebody here is critical to your dealership because that's what drives them ultimately into your showroom. And of course, that's when they get on site. And then ideally here is where you're capturing more customer uh, feedback, right? You're surveying your customers, hopefully, to uh, learn about what they thought about your dealership and what their experience was. Hopefully it was positive and it turns then into an endorsement, which, follow, which then follows back into the journey and, and feeds the reviews that further encourage others to come and visit you. Um, so I wanna take this time now before we go into our next section uh, and, and pop up another poll question for you guys. So do you use maps to find information such as store hours, phone number, or links to the website? I just want to know if you guys use maps in that way. Specifically, we're talking about maps. So are you using maps to find information such as hours, phone number, links to the website? Uh, 
All right, our answers are in. And 61% of you said that you do, uh, which is fairly significant, right? Uh, a majority are actually, in fact, using maps to pull information like this that typically in the past we would have gone to a search, right? You, you'd open up a, uh, a Google search query and, and do that in search versus opening up your Google uh, Maps or your Apple Maps. Uh, and what we're finding is this is becoming more and more normal. Um, consumers are hopping their car and first thing they do is open up the map search, whether it's Apple or Google, and then within there they're typing in, you know, what they're looking for, you know, you know, dealership near me. And their intent is really just to get the phone number or their intent is to get the driving directions or their intent is to see the reviews before they get there. So what do you need to do, right? So we've got to focus on, you know, now that we know, you know, that, that Google, that Apple is coming head first at Google when it comes to maps, um, we know that we've talked a lot in the past and you've heard not only from myself, but others uh, uh, about what you should be doing on Google and, and the importance of the knowledge panel on Google. But now let's pivot and say, well, what should you be doing with regard to Apple, right? And one common question is, well, okay, how, how, what do I need to do when it comes to Apple Maps? First thing is you need to claim your listing on Apple, right? That's step one. Uh, to claim your Apple Maps listing, you have to go to uh, mapsconnect.apple.com. Now, this is it's pretty similar to the Google My Business process, but this is specifically for Apple, right? Even if you don't claim your listing, it's likely that Apple's already uh, got a business listing for you there. Um, they get their data from other sources. So it, it's even more important to claim your own listing to ensure that the information is actually correct. Um, because I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen where Google pulls information from these third parties, it's not even accurate information. So you need to go in there and make sure they've got the right info about your business. Um, then you're going to need to, uh, uh, an Apple ID at that point. So if you don't have one already, you'll need to create one. Now, you can then follow the uh, on-screen steps to claim or add your business, which typically includes a phone verification to ensure that you are legitimately representing that business. Now, once you've claimed your business and signed in, then you'll see all the listings that you have that are associated with your Apple ID account. And the, the Apple Maps interface it, it isn't as developed as, as Google is. Um, and, and you can't have multiple admins like you could for Google, unfortunately, uh, for your business. But you can have multiple locations that are associated with a single Apple ID. Um, so what else do you need to do? Reviews. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk until I'm blue about reviews, right? Uh, I always talk about the importance of reviews um, because review requesting is extremely important. If you think about the experience, right, you, you, you want to make sure you're capturing as many reviews as possible so that way the public can see that information. Um, you don't leave reviews to chance, meaning um, most people who leave a review that's unprompted where nobody asked them to leave a review. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's because they had a poor experience and they were um, so passionate and, and enraged perhaps about that bad experience that they wanted to make sure that everybody knew about it. Um, but for the most part, most customers who come and have an experience at your dealership, whether it's a sale experience or service experience, most of them have a positive experience. It's just that we don't always do a good, good enough job asking those folks to please leave us that positive review. So you got to ask for those reviews. Um, you know, it's the happy customers that are untapped and you just need to tap into them. Uh, whether you're doing it through a manual process um, where it's simply having your staff at the store ask every customer to leave that review or you have a third party like a reputation who's supporting you and automates the process where we just send out an, e an, an email request or a text request, something like this, that will generate a, uh, a prompt asking the customer to leave that feedback. Um, and then you wanna, you know, once you collect more reviews, what that's doing is it's actually boosting um, your presence online because the more reviews you have, the better quality of those reviews uh, what we are finding is not only Google, but Apple and others 
determine where you're gonna rank in, in the result that pop up when somebody performs that search. So if you're a store that only has one review versus a store that has 100 reviews, chances are the store with the 100 reviews is gonna appear up at the top. And you want to make sure that you're positioning yourself uh, strongly. The way to do that is by capturing more reviews. Um, so let's say now you're capturing more reviews. That's great, but that poses another problem potentially. You're collecting more reviews. That means you need to be responding to more reviews because consumers look and see, do you acknowledge your customers or not? Uh, whether it's happy or upset customers, it's important to respond to both because upset customers, of course, you want to make sure that you're listening to them and you are resolving their problems. Um, it's not enough just to say, we're sorry you had such an experience. You do need to make sure you're following through on that and, and trying to resolve the issue. You don't have to do, resolve it online. You take it offline. You give them a, a phone number, you tell them to come back in the store, and, and then you try to work it out where it, you know, it, it's behind the scenes. Um, what that does is it, it shows other customers who are reading reviews that you care enough to engage back with your customers and you look to resolve problems. And if I'm a consumer, I'm looking for that specifically because I know you're going to work with me. On the positive reviews, those are your advocates. You want to show them you know, some love. And by doing uh, a simple, taking a moment to respond back to them and say, hey, we really appreciate you sharing that information. We love it. Or uh, any kind of acknowledgement will encourage that customer to go on leaving more positive reviews for you in the future. Now, when you respond um, to a negative review, um, you know, you're not always gonna get that person to do a, a 180 and change from a one star to a four star like you see here. However, it does work. And we have so many examples of this where um, just simply acknowledging your customer and that's oftentimes that's all they want. They're, they're leaving this feedback out there in hopes that somebody at the dealership sees this and will acknowledge them. And if you do that, um, sometimes that's all it takes for them to go back and change their review star rating uh, because it showed that you do actually care. Uh, and this is just one example of that where you know customer uh, complained, dealership listened, uh, acknowledged them, and then they went back on uh, within just a matter of days and changed that review. Now, what else should you be doing? So. Um, if you have a platform like ours, so what we do on, on Reputation is we're collecting all this feedback, all this information from reviews, be it from cars, from Edmonds, from, from, from maps, from, um, uh, from, from different sources, and we're putting it all through our platform. So for one, it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to manage. So this way, you don't have to have 10 different credentials, 10 different passwords, 10 different URLs that you have to remember where to go to to look at these reviews. Um, we're aggregating it all and putting it in one place. But not only that, even more important, we're taking the sentiment uh, from the language that they're writing about your, their experience and we're categorizing this information and then we're bucketing it. And now we're giving you abilities that patterns and issues that are happening at the store. So in, in one micro example of one customer with a complaint, that doesn't tell you that much. It tells you that one customer's issue. But if you take a step back and you look at, okay, let me look at my reviews over the last six months. Now suddenly you have a word cloud that's telling you, you know, particular patterns that are happening, whether it's staff members or COVID issues or you know, cleanliness in your service uh, uh, waiting area, things like this start to rise. Now you start seeing, okay, there is a bigger, more complex issue here that I need to solve for. Let's go ahead and fix that now. Um, that's where having a platform like ours that does uh, the machine learning and we, we're, we're doing the analysis on language comes back and gives you um, some advice on what to do next. That's where reputation score uh, X comes into play, giving you advice on what you should do to increase your score. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and ultimately what we're, you're looking at is, you know, an integrated platform that drives reoccurring traffic to your dealership, right? So you, you, you're ultimately trying to maximize awareness of your brand and your, the experience that you're giving to your consumers um, because it all that, that journey comes full circle right back. Um, starts with the way the customers will find you online as long as your information's out there, you've got photos on your listings, be it on maps or on, on, on the knowledge panels or on Google or on Apple. Um, and then are you collecting reviews? The more reviews you have, the better those reviews are, the more likely you are to be uh, chosen. 
and then ultimately you want to improve. So now they've chosen you, they've come to your store, they wrote about the experience that they had uh, at your store, and you're learning from those experiences, and then you can improve those experiences. You can optimize the experience at the dealership because you're collecting that information and you're taking learnings from those that, that are being collected. Um, that way the next person comes around and sees even better reviews. And that's where the, you know, we're, we're scoring you. So you get a sense of here's how much you've improved over the last six months. Here's where you stand compared to the rest of the auto market and so on and so forth. Now, if you're not sure what your reputation score is, if you don't already have a reputation as a platform, um, I'm going to encourage you to go to www.repscore.com. And if you go there, you can actually type in your dealership name and we should be able to find you in there and you should be able to see your score. Um, so if you're not already on our platform, this is one mechanism that'll give you an idea of, of where you stand and, and what your score looks like. So that score is kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a credit score, right? Uh, we're taking into account things like um, your star average, the volume of reviews, the spread of your reviews. Are they, are they on Google and, and, and other platforms? Are they on the most visited sites? Um, we're looking at, are you responding and engaging back with your audience? We're looking at your social media channels. Uh, do you have those channels up? Are you active on those channels? Um, we look at even right down to um, the length of a customer reviews. Uh, are you getting nothing but you know one word answers or just simply star ratings with no feedback in there? Uh, because we know studies have shown that customers are more uh, more likely to click on a review that has you know a paragraph of writing or you know some some substance to it. Um, so we factor all these kind of things in. And that's what goes into your reputation score. Um, um, so hopefully you can go there, take a look, see what your score is. Um, and you'll see uh, when you are on our platform, if you, you, you have our platform, that's where reputation score X comes into play. You'll see your score, but then you'll also see, you know, what's good, what's bad, what, what can you improve on? Recommendations that'll tell you, for example, if you capture, you know, three more reviews on Google, um, that'll help lift your score by X number, things like that. Or if you simply respond back to customers on such and such platform, you'll, you'll, you'll find a lift of you know, this many points on your reputation score. So um, it's not enough just to tell you your score, but we believe that we need to be true partners with your dealership and tell you here are the next steps that you need to improve your score and get better. Um, with that, what I want to do is I want to open up to the last poll question. However, it's not really a poll question. I think it's more of a quiz to see if you guys were listening. So let, let's go to the last one here. So what are the three ways that your iPhone taps into voice search? Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. What, what are the three ways that your iPhone taps into, uh, into Yelp? Is it? Uh, actually, I guess we probably set up this poll question wrong. So I'm going to give it away because it's right there. <laughs> the three ways that your iPhone taps into, uh, into Yelp is voice search, Apple Maps, and Apple Voice Bar. You guys got it, 100%. What do you know? You guys were paying attention. <laughs> um, so this has been great. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do now, I think we're about 30 minutes in, which is perfect timing. Uh, we're gonna open up to some questions here. All right, now let's start the Q&A session. Uh, reminder for the audience, please continue to enter your questions to the Q&A panel. So our first one here is, where can I go to claim my business on Apple Maps? Ah, so that's a great question. Um, and we do have that. I'm gonna pull it back up on the screen here for you to see. I think it's, uh, so this is actually a screenshot of what the page looks like. It, it's actually, write this down. It's, it's mapsconnect.apple.com. That's where you need to go to claim your Apple listings. I'll repeat it again. It's, it's mapsconnect, M-A-P-S-C-O-N-N-E-C-T dot apple.com. All right, we have one here. Uh, first one, let's see. Uh, do we think knowledge panels are used as much for B2B? We know they're used for B2C, but what about B2B? Um, so the knowledge panel is, it, it's, I mean, the majority use for a, a knowledge panel is B2C uh, or, or, or 
the consumer to the business, really, right? Uh, and, and the business to the consumer. Um, it, it's you as a business putting that information out there for customers to find you. But uh, it's not beyond the realm of other businesses uh, using it in a B2B realm. But you know, overall, the majority is B2C. All right, this one says, are the reviews that are filled out from Apple Maps shown to me through Yelp, do I get an email notification of a review? You will get the email notification and you're gonna get that from Yelp. Um, so Apple is not in that in between when it comes to um, the review being uh, left on Yelp. Apple has a you know, hands-off approach in that regard and they let Yelp do their business to notify you. So as long as you actually have claimed yourself on Yelp, if you have not claimed your Yelp account, uh, somebody can still leave a review there but you just wouldn't know about it because you haven't claimed it. So you would have to manually go there and look as if you were a customer. So uh, you, you have to go and claim yourself on Yelp as well. That's a great question. All right, this one says, I don't have an iPhone, but I do have a Mac. Can we update Apple Maps on a Mac? Don't have an iPhone, but you have a Mac. So um, if I understand you correctly, on, on your Mac, you should be able to just go to um, I, I guess Apple Maps, do they have a widget for the Mac? Um, I don't know that they do. I want to say it's only uh, a, uh, it's only an application that you could download on an iPhone, but I could be wrong. So I, I, I would say you need to probably Google that to see what they have on your Mac. Um, generally speaking, uh, Apple Maps, as far as I, I'm aware of, they've only created it for your iPhone. I don't think they ever created anything as a, like a landing page experience, like you would have with Google, or uh, if you typed, you know, Google Maps or something like that. All right, this one says, will reputation.com integrate with Apple Maps once they roll out their platform and stop using Yelp? Absolutely, that, that's a high priority for us. Um, that's something that we, we've definitely got our finger on, on the pulse of and we're, we're monitoring it uh, constantly. Um, our partnerships with Google and Apple and the like are extremely important to us because we wanna make sure that we are uh, at the leading edge uh, of this kind of technology and bringing you guys uh, the latest and greatest. So that would definitely be a priority for us. All right, so we got a couple here all revolving around a similar things. So this one says, uh, thank you for the presentation. And it also says GMB at the bottom, we have a 3.5 Facebook rating and a three dealer Raider rating. Facebook no longer gives a rating yet it still shows up on GMB. How do we upgrade to 4.2 plus stars on Facebook? How do we remove dealer Raider? Hmm. So Google is in the practice now of really just pulling reviews from multiple sources just so they can look like they're fair. So they, re they realize and recognize that if they didn't do that, uh, they may be deemed that they are a monopoly, right? So and what we're talking about here specifically, for those of you who aren't sure what we're talking about, the question is in particular about the knowledge panel. When you, when you Google a business, the knowledge panel appears on the right-hand side. It'll have the photos up at the top. They'll have some star ratings that are pulled from Google. Then if you scroll down, you'll, you'll see like phone number and information, but then toward the bottom of the knowledge panel, they'll pull in other sources of reviews. And oftentimes it's three different sources. Um, they mix them and match them. It's not always the same ones. And really it's, it's an algorithm that, that Google uses that determines what they're gonna pull in. Um, for many dealers, Dealer Raider is one of them. Um, and another one would be Cars. Another one could be Yelp. Um, although I'm seeing less of the Yelp come through nowadays there, uh, but I am seeing more of the dealer rater. Unfortunately, that's something that you don't necessarily have control over. Um, it, is a, it is an algorithm that Google's using that determines what three other sources they're pulling in there. So uh, I wish I had better news for you that told you, hey, you can, you can dictate and change those around. Uh, but today um, it, it's out of our control. Uh, let's see, one right here that says, uh, 
<laughs> my, my bad, sorry. Uh, so let's see, this one says, can you send the digital journey data supporting what you stated in your presentation? And along with that, there's also how much does it cost for a long copy review replier that is customized and not templated? Um, so, with, okay, so to answer the first part of the question, I think uh, this, this deck will be made available. Um, and, and we will uh, make this shareable. You can also contact us and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, provide you more information uh, in that regard as well. Um, as far as the second part of the question, um, we do have different services. Uh, we do have a fully managed capability and we have a self-managed capability. So in the self-managed capability where it's like do it yourself, you log into the platform and then we we're capturing all the reviews on one place for you uh, where you're able now to respond to all those uh, reviews from the platform. And there are ways to create canned responses from there. So you can hit a drop down, um, but there's a there's probably thousands of combinations of responses that you can make where it might have a you know introduction, a body, and then a close. Those are three different components that you could add um, and, and you can mix and match those as you please for a quicker way to respond. Of course, you can also go in there and Forget those canned responses, uh, the mix and match canned responses, you could just type in uh, freestyle, anything that you want in there as a response on your own. Now, through our managed services, we will go in there and we will do our responding on there. Um, and, and they would be custom responses uh, in there if, you're, if you asked us to do your fully managed review responding. Um, as far, I think part of the question was also price. It depends on really, uh, we have different uh, programs. So if you're aware of us, we have different dealer programs. If you're a uh, Ford store, a GM, uh, maybe a Chevy GMC store or Buick store, or if you're Subaru, so on and so forth. We have different dealer programs with each OEM. Uh, and uh, a lot of times your uh, uh, your dealer program pricing is incentivized through those programs. So you'll, you'll get a, a better uh, uh, package set up, if you will, through those OEM programs. All right, this one says, does reputation.com have the ability to integrate with more than one GMB listing to accommodate for parts and service listings? Yes, so that's extremely relevant topic. Um, and it's a topic that uh, we've uh, helped kind of drive within the space because we do know that it's important that you separ start separating your sales, uh, parts, service, so on, uh, on your GMBs. Uh, it's something that Google pivoted about maybe a year and a half, almost two years ago. They pivoted their position on that. And now they are strongly suggesting you break those uh, segments out or you, you create these what they call nested departments. So ultimately they all ladder into your main dealership store, but now you have nested departments that fall under there. And what that does is, uh, for those of you who don't know, it allows now your service department to garner more traffic. Whereas in the past, if somebody did a you know search for oil change near me, your dealership is mostly gonna be driving vehicle sales versus a Jiffy Lube was probably going to be who's going to drive like oil change engagements and things like that. Well, by putting a nested service department under your listing, you become more relevant in those searches. And now you're able to drive more business to your service department that way. And yes, that is a capability that we do have. And we can do that for your dealerships. Right, this one says, what is the ROI in dollars for GMB and Apple Maps? How would you demonstrate ROI uh, in dollars? <laughs> um, the, the easiest way to demonstrate ROI in dollars, that's why I, we would have to run a study, but the easiest way is really in those, uh, in, in the uh, uh, call to actions that are low funnel on, on both GMB and on Apple Maps. That's the clicks to call, clicks to your website, and clicks for driving directions, all low funnel activities, right? And we track those. So uh, uh, we are able to actually track and tell you how many engagements you've had that generated those low funnel clicks or those low funnel actions, uh, be it on, on Google or Apple or, or, or whatnot. So we can track those and provide those to you. Um, and I'm sure that there's, so there, there's ways to be able to actually study that. That would probably be where you'd wanna start. 
uh, to do a specific uh, uh, study on, on you know, what, what is the profitability or what, you know, what, how can you measure success in those areas? All right, this one says, right now we push consumers to review us under Google or Facebook. Do I now push the consumer to include Apple Maps to leave a review? Um, right now, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily make any kind of changes until they, they make their change on their side. For now, uh, it looks like they're still, they're still depending on the, the third party, even though we, we have that leaked information that's showing that they're eventually gonna pivot. I'm guessing that COVID, um, has, has put a wrench in a lot of uh, roadmaps. This is probably one of those things and why it hasn't rolled out yet. The anticipation was really that by the end of 2020, it was gonna roll out. So uh, that being said, I'd say don't make a change yet. Um, not to knock any, any particular platform or review site. Um, we know that within the auto space, Yelp hasn't necessarily been one of the most favored uh, platforms. We know that Yelp tends to do very well when it comes to restaurants. Um, in our particular business, uh, they, they just tended to be a lot of uh, ruffled feathers, if you will. So I'd say for now, don't change anything that you're doing. Uh, let's continue monitoring the situation, seeing when they actually do pivot and change, uh, then maybe calling for, okay, do we start driving reviews there? Because for now, they, they still are on, on Yelp. Um, and one thing I just thought of for, for the previous uh, question, uh, as far as ROI goes, um, we've actually done studies on ROI, but uh, what we've done is we've factored in things like your reputation score, um, which your reputation score does depend heavily on those kind of actions that customers take that, that drive business to your store. And in our study, we've done this multiple times with multiple OEMs. Uh, what we found was that uh, retail dealers that had improve their reputation score uh, in a six month period, uh, saw about a 10% lift in sales volume. Uh, in the same period, we looked at dealers who dropped in reputation score and those ones uh, that dropped in reputation score saw about a 3% decrease in sales volume. So there are, there are correlation studies that we've done uh, in this area that, that prove out um, it is important for you to manage your online business listings and reviews uh, because it does connect the dots down to how much revenue your store is uh, generating. Uh, is Apple providing open APIs to gather the data to pull into my reporting solution? Are they providing APIs? Um, Apple has, so that, that's a technical question that I, I'm, I don't feel comfortable enough to, to answer. I know that we have APIs with, with Apple and others. Um, I don't know what it would take for you to be able to tap into their APIs. Sorry, I wish I had a better answer for you there. What is a good score for GMB for a dealer? Um, a good score, so you, anything less these days, unfortunately the bar has been set pretty high. Um, you know, a, a three and a half star average rating is considered on the lowest and uh, you know, on the lower end of the spectrum. Um, it, it's almost like you need a, a, a four star average and above to be considered highly competitive, right? And anything less than four stars, you're, you're starting to get dinged. What if my business has already been claimed by Apple Maps, but not by someone at our business? Then I would definitely encourage you to go to that uh, site uh, and, and claim it because then you take matters in your own hands. Once you claim it, now you can start updating your business hours. Uh, if you close on certain days, if there are holidays, you can control that stuff. Now you can also uh, control uh, the images, the photos that are actually placed on, uh, on your site, on, on, on Apple Maps and so on. So highly encourage you to take the time and claim it uh, uh, from Apple. All right, uh, what platforms do I need to think about when I update my apps? Um, you definitely want Google. You definitely want Apple. Um, you should have already done sites like, like cars.com. I'm guessing you guys are already on there. Edmunds um, uh, and then Facebook. So I, I'd say 
you know, those are the major ones. Um, let's start, say that again. It's, it's Google, Apple, Facebook, and then you definitely want to do things like cars and admins and, and so on, which those ones you probably already are on. Those are the most visible, right? Um, in auto, um, and I definitely start there as a low hanging fruit. Does rep.com have the ability to change hours on all our stores, say for Labor Day, close for all stores on all platforms? Uh, as long as that we've gotten the proper uh, uh, integrations and, and, and uh, credentialing set up, because not all sites have APIs. Um, some uh, sites don't allow for APIs. Like, for example, we used to have APIs with cars.com. Cars.com got rid of their APIs and they're supposed to be revamping them. Um, but in the meantime, it means that there's a little bit more manual effort there. So we need the keys and the credentialing. But so we still have mechanisms for that. So as long as we're working with your dealership and, and you're giving us the proper credentialing, uh, then we have the keys to be able to go and make those, all those updates on your behalf it truly becomes a white, a white glove service where we would do that for you and you don't have to trouble yourself. Do I still need to be concerned with Yelp reviews on Apple? Um, for time being, yes, because that's, it's still happening for now. Um, how much longer that's gonna be, we don't know, but it seems like uh, uh, it's just uh, over the horizon. It's it it's, should be coming up soon. That uh, that may be changing. And uh, is there a place on Apple Maps to leave a review that is separate from Yelp? Not yet. Not yet. Um, that's that's a lot of what we're we're seeing now. Is that eventually it looks like Apple wants to take control. They want that content. They're they're recognizing and realizing the value of reviews. Uh, they see it firsthand because they see what Google's doing with the reviews. And they know that the reviews power a lot of the, the, the search ranking and information that's out there. So that's data and information that Apple wants to own now. Um, and you can bet that you know, they're, they're, they're scrambling to be able to, uh, to generate their own platform to capture your reviews. So. Great. Well, it appears that we have no more questions at this time, but would you like to provide any closing comments before we end today's show? Uh, I just want uh, to thank everybody for taking the time to join us uh, this afternoon uh, to go through this. I know that uh, uh, Apple Maps isn't always the sexiest thing to talk about. Everyone wants to talk about Google. I just felt it was really important that we don't forget that there are other platforms that, that garner a lot of traffic and attention. And uh, what I want to let you guys know is if you do have more questions, visit us on our site um, on, on reputation, uh, reputation.com, simple as that. Uh, and there's more information that you can learn from there. Uh, go to our site. Uh, also go to repscore.com uh, and punch in your dealership's name, find your dealership and see what your score is there. Um, and we'd be more than happy to uh, uh, answer any additional questions, anything that you weren't able to ask here, or if maybe you had something that you want to take offline with us. Uh, reach out to us uh, through our site and we'd be more than happy to take the time to sit down with you. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar and thank you to Ollie and Reputation for this great presentation. To view this webinar on demand and future digital dealer webinars, please visit digitaldealer.com slash webinars. Once again, thank you and have a great day.